Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, Tropical Storm Sarah has formed off the northeast coast of Honduras and it's going to become a major flood threat to the region. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltimits.com for Thursday, November 14th, 2024. And happy anniversary to my, my wife and I, married 10 years today. So congratulations to us. Black Arrow is pointing towards Tropical Storm Sarah in the Gulf of Honduras, hugging the coastline of Honduras. And you can see it's going to be bringing a ton of rain to the region over the next several days as it slowly moves westward towards the southeast coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Here's our vorticity, energy, and spin in the atmosphere of our storm. And you can see that the rest of the Atlantic is becoming more dominant by our gale nor'easter-like storms as it shows signs of coming to the end of the hurricane season, which is fast approaching on November 30th. But still got to keep an eye on things because La Nina is going to be kicking in soon and we could see potentially uh, this season extend a little bit longer because of the above average sea surface temperatures. But nothing on the models uh, long term noting right now. Here's a close up view of Sarah. You can see the thunderstorm convection that's flaring up and going to be coming on shore thanks to that counterclockwise wind direction and the mountains of Honduras could of course that orographic lift and that's going to cause a ton of rain to be drenched out of this storm and soaked onto the ground and cause a lot of flooding. So we got winds of 40 miles per hour not the big threat moving west at 10 but that's going to slow down substantially as you see with those very tight packed S's on that screen there and eventually this will recurve back into the Gulf of Mexico and towards Florida, but it's going to take about a week to do that. If you look at the model intensity guidance, you can see we could see this strengthen as long as it stays over water, uh, which is its fuel, and it could potentially become a hurricane, but most models are keeping this as a tropical storm because of the land interaction, especially when it uh, makes landfall eventually with Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula in about four days from now, and then could re-strengthen while in the Gulf of Mexico before making us another landfall with the coast of Florida. Now with all the rain coming to this region with the storm stalling out, we could see locally upwards of two feet of rain, which is four to 500 millimeters of precipitation in this region, especially in that dark red spot along the north coast of Honduras. So this is no joke. You need to prepare for this system as it's going to be drenching you for the next several days. So here is the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding Sarah. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You could pause this to take a chance to read it. So let's look at the models and see what is causing all this. So we have the GFS A50 cyclonic vorticity, the energy and spin in the atmosphere 5,000 feet up from the surface of the water. The black hexagon on the bottom left of your screen is Sarah. So the upper level environment is conducive for it to continue to strengthen while it stays, if it stays over water. We got that upper level ridge, which creates that low wind shear environment, protecting its moisture bubble from the surrounding air in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. 24 hours from now, we see that it's hugging the north coast of Honduras. 48 hours from now, pretty much in the same spot. That's why we're going to see so much rain. It is moving so slowly because it's directly underneath this high pressure ridge. So this is not, and the winds, the trade winds in the Caribbean are so weak right now that it's got nowhere really to go. So it's slowly going to drift to Belize by the time we get to Sunday, November 17th, and then cross the Yucatan on Monday the 18th. So you can see this is four days and it's only moved so far. And then finally back into the over the waters of the warm Gulf of Mexico uh, on Tuesday, November 19th, which would be five days from now. And then you see to 
just to its north, you see that upper level trough digging into the upper Great Plains and the Midwest of the United States. That's eventually what's going to pull this storm north and east towards Florida. So if you look at the upper level environment, it will have be on the edge of that upper level ridge, so it can re-strengthen. The subtropical jet is just to the north and west, which will eventually push it towards Florida. Minimal wind shear environment once it enters the Gulf of Mexico, but that's eventually going to see all that red just to its north and west. It's going to shred the storm apart eventually as it continues moving in that northern direction. So it's going to have a little bit of time to rewrap some of its moisture to try and re-strengthen. As you can see here, four, uh, six, six days from now on Wednesday, November 20th, as it moves towards the Gulf Coast of Florida, likely as an extra tropical system, but it could re-strengthen with the warm waters to a potential tropical storm. We're not expecting any major hurricanes, so don't have to worry about that. And then a week from now, it's going to be in the Atlantic as an extra tropical system just being shredded apart by the subtropical jet, high wind shear, and nothing compare, making it look like a tropical system at, point, at that point any further. If we look at the European model, pretty much is in a strong agreement with the, Europe, with the GFS. You can see the very slow movement of our system as it works its way off the coast of Honduras to Belize into the Gulf of Mexico and then pulled away by our upper level trough. So here is our ensemble models showing where this storm is going to go over the next seven days. They're in pretty good agreement that it's going to go towards Florida, potentially the Panhandle or the Gulf Coast near Tampa. We'll see the exact where it winds up once it's in the Gulf of Mexico which again is going to take some time, four to five days from now, and then the steering conditions there will determine if it's going to go directly north or if it's going to go a little bit further east. We'll see. So again, we'll continue to track Tropical Storm Sarah as we monitor this storm and the major flood threat it's going to be to Honduras, Belize, anywhere, everywhere in Central America, and then eventually work its way up towards Florida and the Gulf Coast of the United States. After Sarah, it's a matter of will we see Tony, Valerie, and William. As of right now on the models, I do not see anything going towards the end of November. But like I said, La Nina is getting ready to kick in, so we'll keep an eye on it just in case. As a reminder, we have super things available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.